Okay, moving on to our next unit of study, populations. We're going to start off looking at the difference between two different uh, species survival approaches, K and R selected species. Uh, well, I'm going to try. Let's see. Okay, so basically there's two approaches that organisms on Earth take towards uh, ensuring the survival of their species. You can take an R selected approach or a K selected approach. R selected basically means have lots of cheap uh, offspring. In other words, ones that you're not going to put any, any, expend any energy trying to help survive, have lots and lots and lots of babies. And you know what? There's just statistics. Some of them are going to survive. So your species will continue. Then there's the case selected approach. So the case selected approach is uh, have a much fewer number of offspring, but invest time and energy uh, ensuring that the offspring do survive and more of them will. So both of these strategies work but they lead to very different types of species that we find uh, in an ecosystem. <clears throat> so our selected species, they have, first of all, the, the, the main thing is they have a lot of offspring. They have big broods, okay? Uh, and they don't, they don't spend any time parenting. They just have the babies and move on with their lives. Now, generally speaking, these organisms are adapted to unstable environments where environmental change, uh, environmental factors change rapidly. And so perhaps it just doesn't make a lot of, of sense evolutionarily to, to spend time around the offspring, just like have them. And those that are adapted to the new changes will do well. And those that aren't won't. And there you have it. Uh, so the basic idea is that because of environmental instability, the population can change dramatically from one generation to the next. But here's the real catch. In, a, in an R selected species, most of the offspring are going to die before they have a chance to reproduce. So most of them are never going to get to reproduce. They're going to die first. Now let's compare that to a case selected species. Oops, no, before we do that, let's just talk about some examples of them. All right, so basically, if we look at R selected species, the R stands for uh, what we call a biotic potential, something we'll talk about in a future lesson, uh, basically is, is the, the maximum rate of reproduction. Like what is the fastest this organism could possibly reproduce based on the time frame at which it takes to reproduce. Uh, and what we find is these are selected species, these ones that, that, that mm, try to reproduce as fast as possible. Uh, what we tend to find is, generally speaking, they are low body weight organisms. They're small. They're not very big usually. They don't live very long, you know, months to weeks to maybe a year or two. Uh, they have a lot of babies, as we said, like huge numbers of babies. And these babies are able to, to mature very quickly, and they don't need any parental support to do that. They're born, and as soon as they are hatched, they, man, they're ready to go. Uh, they develop without having to do any learning. And they reach a reproductive age very quickly, so they can they can continue the process. So those are the, the factors we'd associate that. I mean, if you think about it, there's lots of organisms that fit this description. So let's just look at a few I put down at the bottom here. We have herring, like fish, like big schools of fish. Many, many fish species fit this, this model. Uh, grasshoppers and other insect species. Uh, dandelions, a, a lot of plant species take this model. And then some smaller uh, mammals, such as mice, have, have large... Uh, baby say it is true they do invest some time uh, providing them with milk they have to do that but other than that there's not a lot of time spent helping them learn uh, so 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 that's basically our selected species now let's take a look at case selected species so a case selected species is just going to have a much smaller number of offspring just just you know two or three usually or, or one all right and they're going to invest a lot of time and energy helping that baby survive so these organisms are usually found in in pretty stable environments where things aren't going to change very rapidly so it makes time just you know to invest time so if, if if it takes several years in order for your offspring to to be ready to go off on their own and in those several years conditions are going to change so much the odds of this baby living are really small well, it doesn't make sense to invest a lot of time raising a baby that's just going to die but if you're in a stable environment it does if, if the environment is not likely to change then it's a very a very strong reproductive strategy to invest a lot of time in this one offspring knowing it's going to live so we tend to find these type of case like this species uh, in stable environments like climax forests uh, and, and coral reefs. So these case selected -like species, they're, they're, they're highly adapted, uh, a very niche, niche specific, uh, organisms. Uh, and, uh, basically what we find is that, um, their populations don't fluctuate much. They, they tend to stay pretty constant. Uh, they're, um, 
they they stay near the maximum possible that can survive given the resources available. And that's something we're going to learn to call carrying capacity. You've probably studied it in biology, but we'll definitely have to study it this unit. But these case-selected species tend to stay at or near what's called the carrying capacity, the maximum number that could live in that environment given the resources. And the letter we use to represent carrying capacity is capital K, whereas R is the rate or biotic potential. So we have R selected. K selected means you, you tend to find these organisms uh, at or near the carrying capacity. Uh, and basically, because the parents invest a lot of time in their offspring, most of the offspring do live to a reproductive age, which is just the opposite from the r species. So <clears throat> I already told you that. I got all carried away and talked about what K meant. But let's just talk about some of the traits that we find in these uh, K-selected species. They tend to be big, you know, much bigger than, than, than r selected species. You know, elephants, horses, Humans, uh, they tend to live a long time. They, they, they have long lifespans, decades. Uh, they often have a long gestation period. So it, it, the, the parent, a, a lot of the development of the organism happens while it's still being carried within its, its parents. So these are mostly mammal species, but not exclusively. There's bird species too. Uh, they don't usually have a whole lot of offspring. So if they had too many offspring, it would be difficult to care for them. Uh, and we find that the young are very slow to develop. They're, they're basically, when they're born, they're not anywhere near able to fend for themselves. Uh, and so uh, they're slow to develop and they don't reach a reproductive age particularly quickly. So uh, they require a lot of help and support to get there. So we have, these are very, very different strategies. And here's some adorable examples of case selected species. And as humans, we're case selected species. So we respond to parenting, right? So, you know, when you see like a picture of a whale, or any, you see any organism caring for its young, you kind of go, like, oh, and that's because we're case like the species and we're, we have evolved to want to care for young because that is our survival strategy. Now, it's worth noting that, that it's not a, a binary thing. So, so that, that the K and R are essentially just two different ends of, of a spectrum. So you can have organisms like, say, oysters or, or grasshoppers that just have just Tons and tons and tons of babies. I mean, they're like, I don't wish you could have 5 million babies a year. Most of them are going to die. All right. And there's clearly no effort spent on, on raising them. But as we start moving forward, we see like, well, uh, you know, there's some frogs that carry their babies around on their backs with their tadpoles around. Rabbits, they have a lot of babies and they don't really invest a lot of time caring for them other than they provide them milk when they're born. Uh, then we have cats that do spend some time with their babies. Uh, and, and, you know, they're, they're a little bit. Uh, invest more invested in their, their their children's survival, and then we have like chimpanzees and other primates that invest quite a bit of time. And elephants have spent quite a bit of time nurturing their children and making sure they're ready to go off on their own. So, just the the, the point is that we tend to notice that that the amount of in, uh, of uh, offspring born in a given year is a pretty good indicator of where you are on this R to K spectrum. So, if you have a whole lot, you're going to be an R selected species. If you have a very few number of them, like humans and chimps and elephants, you're going to be on the K end of the spectrum. Now, we're going to talk a lot about this curve in this unit. This is an important curve. It's a carrying capacity curve. Just to point out, so the carrying capacity, basically this dashed line, this represents the population size. That is, is really the maximum that the, the, the environment can support uh, for reasons we'll talk about later. But basically, just saying that this is the, the cap. This is this the environment has enough resource to support this many of this particular organism. So we find as case like the species, their populations will increase until they get there and they will remain very steady right near that limit. That's why we call them case like because K represents carrying capacity. R selected ones, remember R means rate, uh, what we call biotic potential is how fast you can reproduce. And what they tend to do is they reproduce really, really, really fast and they overshoot this carrying capacity and then they die off and they oh and they just reproduce like crazy and then there's not enough resources and they die off. And so we find with these R selected species, these really significant year to year changes in the number of their spe in, in the number of organisms of that particular species population. And here's just a a a, a, a breakdown uh, of of what the differences between the two would be. And I would just encourage you to take a look at the um, slide presentation. Just to, I, I don't want to walk you through all this. I think I spent enough of your time, but you should take a look at this. It's a good uh, overview of the difference between these two. All right. Thanks for watching.